Hello guys, I'm EB the Original Master here. So today I'm here to review the new Spongebob episode that aired this morning at 11, uh, Farmer Bob, which is the season 12 premiere. So um, about this episode, uh, I just got done watching it and I have to give you guys my thoughts about it. So all I have to say about this episode is that um, it's really not that um, amusing in my opinion. It's because that um, it's just all over the place. So, I mean, in this episode, Spongebob and Patrick uh, runs Old Man Jenkins' farm for Mr. Krabs, basically. And uh, that's basically how the episode starts, is Mr. Krabs uh, taking Spongebob to Old Man Jenkins' farm for him uh, to pay off his uh, bill, which they get all the, the ingredients from for the Krusty Krab, basically. So all this episode was was basically Spongebob and Patrick doing a terrible job running the farm at first, such as um, the oysters in this episode were, were, were act as chickens, which I thought was pretty okay. Um, Spongebob constantly making very bad puns and jokes. I really didn't find those funny. I just found them to be te tedious. And then uh, they were actually going to have a, a, a party at the end. So there was a party that happened at the end. And it turns out to be that um, these other farmers were aliens. And I was like, okay. I mean, I don't know whether we're trying, I don't know what, whether we're going for, for this episode, whether they're trying to make a farming episode or a space alien episode. I think they were just going all over the place with this episode, and I just didn't like the whole aliens and run, running a farm, because if they wanted to make a whole episode dedicated to aliens, and that could have been okay on, on itself, but putting aliens in an episode that's dealing with a farm, yeah, that does not sound really interesting, it just doesn't fit that well so i'll just have to give farmer bob an okay i mean i'm sorry but i just really didn't like joe sesmo pulling it out um there were some really good hijinks here and there but it just turned out to be okay for me because i really didn't like the whole aliens and the farm and whatnot and then uh patrick having all these licenses that was pretty okay i guess but yeah season 12 didn't start off pretty good for my opinion but i do hope the rest of the season goes out pretty well. And yeah, so that's my review for Farmer Bob. I'm going to give this episode a 7 out of 10. or No, I'm going to give it a 7.5 instead. Yeah, I'll just give it a 7.5, so it's just an okay, in my opinion. Well, this is just the start of Season 12. Maybe it gets better in the future, I hope. But yeah, so I'll see you guys next time with the Season 11 finale. Well, in production order, which is Squirrel Jelly and The String, which technically is a Season 11 finale, but um, on the 25th, we're actually going to get the actual last episode of the season, which is Goons on the Moon, which really isn't the season 11 finale. That's actually Swirl Jelly and the String, basically. But yeah, I'll see you guys on that review next Sunday. So I'll see you guys then. Bye. Hello, everyone. EB, the original master here, and I'm back with another SpongeBob SquarePants review. So today I'm here to review uh, Gary and Spot. Now, before I get any further, this episode has not aired in the United States, which is my home country, and uh, it actually aired in a different country. And uh, it was actually uploaded from another channel. And uh, yeah, this episode was quite entertaining. And I'm going to drop the link of the video in the description below before it gets taken down by Viacom. Because that's usually what happens, is that if you upload a full episode, it will take a few days for it to get taken down by Viacom. So if you guys want to watch this episode, you better download it and save it. Or else the video will get taken down by Viacom, you won't have access to it. Or you'll just have to wait for it to air in your country. So in this episode, uh, Sandy narrates the nocturnal adventures of Gary and Spot. Gary is SpongeBob Snail, and Spot is Plankton's pet Amoeba. So they actually hang out with each other. And a lot of this, and some of the things in this episode really doesn't make any sense to me. It's because that how would Sandy know who Spot is? We haven't seen any episodes where Spot and Gary. Oh well, excuse me. What I meant to say is we haven't had any interactions with Sandy and Spot, so how would Sandy know who Spot is? See, even though this episode is quite entertaining, the continuity makes absolutely no sense because we haven't seen any episodes with Sandy and Spot, so how would Sandy know who Spot is? But anyways, with that, without out, this, out the way, yeah, so this episode was really entertaining with uh, Gary and Spot doing lots of great things such as uh, hanging out, and uh, going to the Krusty Krab and making food, playing around and stuff. So they were having a good time. And uh, there was this animal catcher that's out chasing them. 
And that was basically the whole uh, gag of this episode of the animal catcher trying to capture uh, Gary and Spot. But anyways, that was quite entertaining. But it turned out to be that um, that the animal catcher, his name is, I think his name is Marvin. I think it says so on the name tag. I might be wrong here, but from the name tag, I, th I think his name is Marvin or something. So uh, it actually turned out to be that he's very lonely in this animal catcher pound or something. So uh, Gary, Spot... And uh, and the animal friends that they that they made uh, decides to throw him a party in his animal catcher jail cell or something. So they th throw Marvin a party. They set they set everything up. One thing I don't like about this episode is Gary vomiting spit to create things. Like actually, in the beginning of this episode, uh, Gary vomited out a slime and created like a, a snail replica of himself while he's out. Hanging out with Spot, that was pretty disgusting, but it really isn't that bad, but it was still quite disgusting to see Gary vomiting out spit to, f to create a replica of himself and a replica of this female interest to in to um, entertain uh, Marvin, the, the animal catcher. So overall, this episode was quite entertaining. It was really funny. And yeah, it's not the best episode of season 12, but it was quite good. I'm going to give Gary a spot a 9.5 out of 10. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. Sorry if it was weird, but I did the best I can. And I'll see you guys next time with more reviews. See you later. Hello, everyone. This is EB, the original master here. And I am here to review the new Spongebob episode that just came out today. Uh, the Knitwitting. So, um, I'm here to give you guys my thoughts of this episode. And uh, some of the goods and the bads about it. And yeah. So, in this episode, uh, Patrick invites Spongebob to his little club of nitwits and yeah so it's another one of those episodes where uh a character like attends like a club or something and we've already seen episodes that has clubs in it and uh for this one i didn't think about how well i would sit through this episode um there were some kind of good things about it like the the amount of references that this episode th threw in uh, such as the Ice Cream King from uh, Patrick's Coupon from uh, Season 10, of course, and uh, the little snake character or the giant eel from Walking Small from Season 1. I mean, that, that was some pretty good cameos of them. And, uh, yeah, this episode kind of felt like Salsa and Basilicus, where the characters were dumb and whatnot. And uh, so Spongebob attends uh, the nitwitting, and he has to be um, brainless, or doesn't have a brain to, to attend. So uh, Spongebob then becomes really dumb in this episode, and doing crazy dumb things. And uh, we also had a scene where the characters were on these little small boatmobiles. I thought that was pretty interesting, I guess. I mean, it wasn't anything new, but it was interesting enough for me to enjoy it slightly. And then, uh, this is another one of those episodes where the characters, uh, had a one-time appearance, and that has to be Sandy. Yes, that's right. They threw in Sandy once again for this one small cameo of this little convention called Femme or something, where she cleaned up the entire Bikini Bottom, I guess. And I don't know about this episode. It's just another one of those episodes where the characters pur purposely act dumb, and it's not anything new. And... I don't I can't call this good is because that it's just a mashup of already existing episodes and it really wasn't that interesting in my opinion. I mean we've already seen this thousands of times in the show, so I can't call it good, but I'll probably give it an okay, I guess. Yeah, season twelve so far has just been kind of boring lately, but I am excited for uh the Krusty Slammer though, which is coming out uh, the, the Sunday after the next Sunday, which I kind of have hopes for, but The Ballad of Filthy Muck, it looks like another one of the, it's, it's another episode where, uh, a character gets dirty and whatnot, and that's Patrick, of course, because Patrick wants to become so dirty, he becomes unrecognizable, and I'm like, okay, this, I'll just have to find out and see when the episode comes out. So yeah, my final rating for The Knit Winning is okay, because... It's just not the greatest out thing out there because we've already had episodes where characters became dumb, they tried to act dumb, and it's nothing new. It's the same thing over and over again, and that's what I'm worried about season 12, is that they're to keep throwing in the same ideas, but we just gotta wait for the near future, you know? 
So yeah, that's my final rating for the knit winning as of now. I'll probably we watch it again if a link is provided, but I'm not gonna beg for that because I'm not that kind of person. But with that said, what are your thoughts of the knit winning? And I'll see you guys next time. Oh yeah, my 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 rating. Uh, I'm gonna give this episode a 7.5. It was just a it was a high okay. It was pretty high, but it's not good. It's just okay in my opinion. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time with the Ballad of the Filthy Muck. Hello everyone, EB the Original Master here, and it is time for me to review the new Spongebob episode that just aired this morning, uh, The Ballad of Filthy Muck, and I'm actually, I'm surprised that this is actually a pretty good episode. Yes, I'm surprised that I actually enjoyed this one. So, um, in The Ballad of Filthy Muck, uh, Patrick is so dirty that, um, he is kicked out of the Krusty Krab until he cleans up his act. So literally the beginning of the episode is just Patrick already dirty, and I actually do love how the writers, which is Kaz, um, threw in uh, Patrick becoming dirty right away. So um, if you're thinking about this episode, uh, there are a lot of good things this episode provided. Um, it did have some of its humor, such as uh, the tour guide from uh, No Pictures Please, the guy who says, amazing, like he surprisingly made a return comeback and he was actually the highlight of the no pictures please episode from the last season season 11 and i'm actually i'm surprised that they brought him back for this episode and he did have his funny moments there um there's actually a song in this episode called uh the ballad of filthy muck it's the song where uh patrick goes to these many places and gets dirty from the places and then uh he's like jumping into like dumpsters he's like in a He's like in a gym locker room where he's playing around in the in the shirts and the, the filthy shirts and whatnot. And the song was actually well, well written and it kind of had like a country hillbilly vibe, which is pretty interesting. And I do love the songs that the, that the show throws in for each season and the songwriters are pretty good at that. And then the part that really got me is at, was towards the end where it turned out to be that Filthy Muck wasn't Patrick all along. It was just basically a a garbage creature that is roaming around Bikini Bottom. So all this time, Filthy Muck wasn't Patrick at all. And that actually threw me off a bit because I was wondering, so Filthy Muck isn't Patrick. So Filthy Muck is just a completely different character. And that was actually a pretty good, that was actually a pretty good trick that they pulled off there. And I have to give the writers some credit that. Overall, I don't want to spoil everything about this episode. So I just gave you guys as little information as possible but overall this was actually a pretty good episode uh i'm gonna give the ballad of filthy muck a nine out of ten yes yeah, so it was actually that good i love the song i love little yuck who was spongebob disguised in garbage so it turned out to be that spongebob was disguising himself but it turned out to be that filthy muck was just a completely different character instead of patrick because at the because it turned out to be that patrick went home and took a shower or a bath like mr krabs told him to so yeah this episode was actually pretty good so I'll see you guys next Sunday with the Krusty Slammer, which I'm pretty excited for, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Hello everyone, EB the Original Master here, and welcome back to the final day of the SpongeBob SquarePants January 2019 Sponge Day Sunday, or Sunday Sponge Day, and today I'm here to review uh, the Krusty Slammer. So the episode just got done airing, and I'm here to give you guys my thoughts on this episode, and um, I found this episode to be highly entertaining. Uh, yeah, so in the Krusty Slammer, Plankton gets sent to the Krusty Krab as a jail set by Mr. Krabs after vandalizing a Bikini Bottom. So basically he vandalized Bikini Bottom, and then since the Bikini Bottom jail has full of prisoners, uh, the, 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 the cop from uh, Call the Cops um, actually gives Mr. Krabs an offer that um, if he takes Plankton to the Krusty Krab as a jail, she will give him money. So basically, the whole Krusty Krab turns into a jail, and now I thought this was pretty great, because we haven't had an episode like this, where uh, the Krusty Krab becomes a jail, and uh, they actually did point out some really good things in this episode, such as Squidward thinking that the Krusty Krab was already a prison to begin with, because he is stuck there every day, having to deal with Spongebob, and I kind of do agree with that. I do agree that the Krusty Krab is kind of like a prison to Squidward, is because that he is trapped there forever, and there's like times that he can't leave, which kind of makes sense. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and throw out some great Easter eggs that this episode threw, threw out at us, such as uh, Sticky Fins and uh, the Tattletail Strangler, the Popeye Fish, 
all of those great prisoner characters in SpongeBob have all made it to this episode. Um, yeah, so overall, this was a pretty good episode. I'm not going to go way into details because that I don't want to spoil everything. And yeah, so I'm going to have to give this episode a 8.5 out of 10. Yeah, so it was pretty good. Well, hope you guys enjoyed my review on the Krusty Slimer, and I'll see you guys next time with more SpongeBob reviews. See you later. Hello everyone, EB the Original Master here, and I'm here with a new SpongeBob SquarePants review. So today I'm here to review the new episode that just aired in Poland, uh, Pineapple RV. So now before I begin, I wasn't originally going to review this episode. It's because that, as you guys can tell, I'm not a Polish speaker. I don't understand Polish. But I will tell you guys my overall thoughts of Pineapple RV from the looks of the episode and the way how I've seen it. So uh, this episode link has been provided through Google Drive. I will put the Google Drive link in the description below if you guys want to check this episode out. And yeah, I might end up watching this again when the episode comes out in the United States, but I won't review it again. It's because that I've had already reviewed it here in the Polish version. So in, in Pineapple RV, uh, Squidward is actually going on a RV trip to discover this musical flower. So basically this musical flower has a clarinet that uh, plays music and Squidward wants to go there to see it. So, um, while he's on his trip, things doesn't go right when Splinter and Patrick screws everything up. In fact, um, Patrick accidentally let go of Squidward's RV because his RV was actually held by a piece of wood. Patrick removed the piece of wood from the tires, the, the, the RV moved on its own, and it crashed, and uh, Squidward can't make it to his location of where this musical flower is at. So SpongeBob and Patrick then turns the pineapple home into an RV by literally taking the front um, part of a truck and slamming it into SpongeBob's pineapples and giving it wheels. Um, it's actually a really unique concept, and I actually do love it. But um, if I had to give some points of criticism, I kind of wish that the RV, the pineapple-shaped RV, had a way better design, but I'm not going to complain about it too much. It, they, the episode did what it did. And I will give the storyboard directors and artists credit for that. So uh, the Sea Bears from the camping episode and uh, Married to Money returns in this episode. The Sea Bears, and uh, they actually were in this were in the forest where they were attacking SpongeBob and Patrick. Well, at first, um, Squidward thought they were being attacked, but it turned out to be that the Sea Bears were being very playful. And so Squidward tries to pet the sea bears. The sea bears gets very angry and, and attacks Squidward. And Patrick threw in a tombstone at him. It was that was actually a really funny joke that the episode had. Uh, the facial expressions were very cartoony and expressive. There were really funny facial expressions in Pineapple RV. Uh, Rube, the tour, the tourist, returns in this episode. I think Rube will honestly be the new returning uh, side character in SpongeBob because of his awesome appearance and uh, No Pictures Please, and The Ballad of Filthy Muck. Overall, uh, Pineapple RV was a really fun episode. It had some really good jokes, despite the episode coming out in Poland, and they had some great visuals and amazing uh, jokes and whatsoever. So I'm going to give Pineapple RV a 8.5 out of 10. Well, hope you guys enjoyed my review on Pineapple RV that aired in Poland. Like I said earlier, I will drop the link of this episode in the description below from google drive and i'd like to give a huge shout out to luke v for actually sending me this link and i'll drop his channel in the description below for you to subscribe to him because he makes youtube poops they're pretty funny and i think you should check this guy out thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time with more spongebob reviews goodbye hello everyone ev the original master here and i'm here to wish everyone a happy father's day now today i'm here to review another spongebob episode that just came out in the italian region uh, Gary's Got Legs. So I would like to give a huge thank you to Death Gaming, who was a user who came to my Discord server and actually dropped the link of this episode in Italian. So of course I saw the episode just to see what it looked like, and since I don't speak Italian, I just will have to give you guys my thoughts of the episode from the animation. So I'm um, in Gary Got Legs, SpongeBob gives Gary a set of his arms and legs for him to do things around the house and whatnot. So the episode begins with um, 
uh, SpongeBob and Gary doing exercises, and it turns out to be that Gary is having a hard time doing these exercises since he doesn't have arms and legs. So SpongeBob literally takes some of his arms and takes some of his legs and give them to Gary for him to use. And this actually had some really funny comical things in it, such as uh, SpongeBob taking Gary to the snail park and Gary kicking the, the park residents while they were out with their pets and whatnot. So that was actually a really funny joke. Um, there's a, a, another funny joke in the episode where Gary opens the door for Patrick. Patrick was about to say something and then Gary just slams the door in his face. That was another funny joke that I found out in the episode. And uh, since SpongeBob has given Gary his arms and legs, um, SpongeBob is now thinking he's a snail. So in the episode, Gary is taking place at the Krusty Krab making the Krabby Patties, and uh, he is making them with a slime. So Mr. Krabs goes over to SpongeBob's house, and then he finds out that SpongeBob is acting like a snail. And so what Mr. Krabs does, he cuts off Gary's arms and legs that SpongeBob handed over to him, and now he's living back a normal life. So overall, Gary Got Legs was a pretty funny episode, and it was actually really good. So I'm sorry if I spoiled some of the episode for you guys, but... If you guys haven't yet seen this episode, I'll probably put a disclaimer in the description that do not watch this review unless you've seen the full episode. And yeah, thank you guys for watching my review on Gary's Got Legs that aired in Italian. Of course, I will rewatch this episode again if it comes out in the United States, same with Plankton's Old Chum. And I probably may, might make another video discussing those episodes in the English version, but I'll think about that when the episodes air in my country. So have a great Father's Day, and I'll see you guys next time with more videos. Hello everyone, EB the Original Master here, and I am here to announce you guys a new Spongebob review today. So today I'm here to review the new episode that just came out in the UK, King Plankton, and I do have the link of this episode. Um, I'll drop it down in the description below for you guys to download the link and watch the episode for yourselves. So um, in King Plankton, uh, Plankton decides to rule uh, Spongebob's aquarium, where it is infested with sea chimps. So basically, a SpongeBob is taking care of the sea chimps, which is basically in his aquarium, and uh, they all live at peace. Um, when the episode began, I actually kind of did somewhat like the opening, but then the rest of the episode, in my opinion, has became pretty okay. Um, what I the reason why I gave this an okay as my rating as I was filing filing finalizing my score for this episode is because that there's a lot of things in this episode that kind of felt like rehashes of other things like um when plankton was ruling the aquarium uh he was basically being like patrick in rule of dumb basically he's asking people for their stuff they must give him his stuff and it's we've seen that like already in the show and i get that that's what a king is a king is supposed to rule the land and they're supposed to get things, but Plankton was being a very, a very rude king because he's evil and he wants to take over. And then uh, the Sea Chimps decides to sacrifice him. Haven't we already seen sacrifices before in the show? Some sacrifices could be fun, while some could be pretty boring. And uh, the sacrifice scene here in King Plankton wasn't anything all that special because it kind of felt like the same sacrifice that SpongeBob had and uh, Sponge Out of Water from the second Spongebob movie. Then it turned out to be that Patrick then ruins everything, and the rest of the, and the, rest of the episode was just nothing groundbreaking. So overall, my final rating for King Plankton is just a okay. It's, it's going to get an okay because it did have some good things in it, while other things were just all right, nothing special. But it wasn't a bad episode at all. It did have some of his great moments, but it was just leaving out okay for me. Well, hope you guys enjoyed my review for King Plankton. Uh, once again, I'll drop the Google Drive link in the description below. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with stormy weather. Bye. Hello, everyone. EB, the original master here. And I'm here to give you guys a brand new SpongeBob SquarePants review. So today, um, we've actually gotten a new episode that just got leaked. Not in Italy, but from a website, I think called VOD. I think that's what this came from, but I'm not sure. But I'm here to review uh, Plankton's Old Chum. So this episode is, is an Italian, and I will drop the link in the description below for you to download it. Now, before I go any further with this review, if you guys don't have a Mega account, you'll have to create one in order to download this link. It's because this is from a Mega 
website is from mega.com and you need a account in order to download the episode. So in Plankton's old chum, Plankton and SpongeBob goes around town hiding Plankton's old chum that he had in the chum bucket. And this episode actually had some really good visuals in it. And I have to say this episode was actually not as bad as I thought it would be. So um, according to ESB, there were supposed to be two songs in this episode called Chum Day and Carol of the Chum. So um, I didn't hear Chum Day because it was in Italian and I, I, I don't understand Italian. So, But I did hear Carol of the Chum. That was the song that was sung when uh, the chum started snowing down all over Bikini Bottom. And all it was was basically Deck the Halls. It was basically Deck the Halls, and then it really wasn't anything interesting. It's because that just because you take an already existing song and changing the lyrics doesn't make the song original or good. So, yeah, Carol the Chum was just okay because it was just basically Deck the Halls. But anyways, chum, uh, Plankton's Old Chum was a pretty good episode. I'll probably give it a low good is because it really wasn't that's all that special and whatnot, but it was still entertaining to watch, and it did have some of its great jokes, such as Gary driving his driving himself home from the snail park where SpongeBob was at. Um, the beginning of the episode was pretty funny, where Plankton and Karen were in the chum bucket counting down, and then the chum freaking erupted like a volcano or something, like it blew up or something. But yeah, that was pretty funny. And yeah, so that's all I have to give for Plankton's Old Chum. I'll see you guys next time when a new episode comes out in July with um, SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout. Oh yeah, by the way, you guys, about SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout, um, I'll talk to you guys more about that in a future video later in July to let you guys know what's going to happen on the week when, uh, Plank when SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout comes out. But I'll let you guys know that in a video coming out later in July. Goodbye. Hello everyone, EB the Original Master here, and I'm back with a brand new Spongebob review for you guys. So today is day two of the weekly premieres of episodes of Spongebob out in the UK and Ireland, and I'm here to review Stormy Weather. So in this episode, uh, Spongebob befriends a small storm cloud from a crazy weatherman. So this episode actually turned out to be really funny, really cute, and lots of great visuals. So... The reason why I say all those words is because that um, the weatherman, who is Gail Doppler, has, has to be the highlight of this episode. So Gail Doppler is this weatherman who is very crazy and predicts the storms. And it turned out to be that the storm cloud in this episode is actually a baby. And so SpongeBob has to take care of him. And it was actually really enjoyable and it had some very funny jokes in there. Um, my favorite part of the episode was the climax where... Uh, uh, Drizzle, which is the name of the storm cloud that Spongebob named, and so, so Drizzle basically is a storm cloud, he can do whatever he wants, he could rain, he could, like, blow wind, he can, like, make snow, it's really creative, and I do love the climax where, um, uh, Dale Doppler tries to kill Drizzle, and then he ends up into a giant storm cloud, and then freaking ends up uh, causing havoc throughout Bikini Bottom, and at the end of the episode, it was actually really, really, uh, heartwarming to see that a drill, uh, sorry, Drizzle, actually made a miniature storm cloud for Spongebob to have on his own while he's out with his parents, and the ending of the episode was actually very heartwarming, so overall, I have to say that Stormy Weather has got to be my favorite season 12 episode so far because of how unique it was. It was very, very heartwarming. It had some very great moments in it. I actually like this episode way more than The Ballad of Filthy Muck and King Plankton. So overall, my rating for Stormy Weather is a high good. So hope you guys enjoyed my review for Stormy Weather. It was a pretty darn good episode, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with the Krusty Bucket. See you later. Hello everyone, this is EB the Sponge Reviewer here with a new review on the new episodes that just aired today here in the United States, uh, Swamp Mates and One Trick Sponge. So I'm here to give you guys this quick little in-depth review of these episodes and to tell you guys my thoughts of them. And I have to say that both of these episodes were actually really creative and really interesting to the point that I actually enjoyed them. 
So um, before I get started with the review, I'd like to actually give credits to Nickelodeon for not showing commercials after the theme song, because as of lately, during these new premieres, they will usually show commercials after the theme song, but not this time. And I do hope they keep up that for the next new episodes that they plan to release, is because that I think them showing commercials after the theme song just ruins the experience for these episodes. So I actually have to give credit to the president of Nickelodeon, for not showing commercials after the theme song, which is a huge thumbs up for them. So I'm um, in Swamp Mates, uh, Mr. Uh, sorry, I'm screwing up already. Uh, SpongeBob actually tells a story of Bubble Bass and Patrick uh, going through the swamps to retrieve um, Bubble Bass's missing action figure, a Wonder Whale toy. So this was actually a really interesting episode because it features two characters um, that we've that we usually don't see interacting that much, which is Bubble Bass and Patrick. And uh, this is actually an episode focused on them. Uh, the visuals in Swamp Mates were pretty interesting, such as the swamp itself. Uh, we had a lots and lots of interesting characters, such as the Chief. Um, if you guys don't remember him, he was the guy from Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 5, who appeared on the TV screen. Uh, he actually returned in this episode, and it was actually a really nice... Come comeback for him because he was actually a really funny character in Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 5. Uh, some new characters were introduced in this episode, such as the saltwater crocodiles, who were in this shack uh, making hot sauce, and Patrick kept eating the hot sauce, and so they ended up chasing Bubble Bass and Patrick all throughout the swamp. The chase scene was, it was alright for what it was. I wouldn't say it's the greatest chase scene I've ever seen in Spongebob, but it was actually a pretty interesting chase scene where you got the, sw the saltwater crocodiles firing these chili peppers at Bubble Bass and Patrick. And so yeah, overall Swamp Mates was a pretty interesting episode, and I'm gonna give this episode a- I'm gonna give it a solid good. It was- it was interesting, and I really did enjoy it. So next we got is One Trick Sponge, which is a short, and in this episode, Spongebob tries to show his friends a trick, but it appears that they're really not interested into the tricks that he wants to perform. So the trick that he's performing is a card trick, and everyone in Bikini Bottom are pretty much ignoring his trick. Well, with Sandy, um, yeah, Sandy was in this episode as a small cameo. Uh, she was actually doing an experiment, so I, I guess she really did want to see the trick, but it turned out to be that she was busy doing this experiment, so uh, she wasn't able to see it. I, th I thought that was pretty funny to see that Sandy's head was um, going through this uh, tree. She was in an alternate dimension, and so the alternate dimension was actually the events and Swamp Mates. Was, it was actually a pretty interesting um, pairing of how Swamp Mates and One Trick Sponge tied up together, which was pretty interesting. So Swamp Mates performed his trick to these little woodland characters that he created so he like made um these characters off of rocks and trees and whatnot and the trick itself was pretty interesting where spongebob performed his trick in this white void i don't know why they went for a white void background but it was interesting because we've seen tv shows and lots of media in a white void so this is anything new but it was pretty interesting to see that the trick that spongebob performed and yeah so that was one trick sponge um, it was a pretty interesting episode, it was a good short, and I'm gonna give this episode a high good. The reason why I give One Trick Sponge a high good is because that I really did enjoy the short that- I really did enjoy the short. And, um, Swamp Mates, it was good, but I wouldn't say it's anything too special, but it was interesting seeing Bubble Bass and Patrick teaming up together, and it was interesting to see an episode focusing on them, and that's why I gave that episode a solid good. So overall, that's my review on One Trick Sponge and Swamp Mates, and I'll see you guys next time with a new review if another episode comes out next month, which will most likely be the case. So yeah, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, EB the Original Master here, and this is going to be my very last SpongeBob SquarePants review that I'll be doing using a web camera, and today I'm here to review The Krusty Bucket, which aired today in the UK and Ireland. So in this episode, Plankton uses his DNA from his antenna and the DNA of Mr. Krabs' hair to create a Plankton and Mr. Krabs fusion in the name of Plank Crab. 
And it was actually a really unique episode because um, at first I thought the plot was very bland and basic, but it actually turned out to be a really fun episode. So before I begin with this review and tell you guys more information about it, even though I've already started the review, I don't even know why I said that, is that this is the most violent episode that we've gotten so far in the season. There are lots of fights going on in this episode between characters such as Plankton and Mr. Krabs. They have to work together to stop Plank Crab because they ask, because he actually made um, their restaurant as the Krusty Bucket, which is the name of the episode, of course, which got in its role later in the episode. And uh, yeah, this episode was actually pretty funny. And it had some really good cameos, such as uh, the I think he was the tour the tour guy from uh, Hello Bikini Bottom. I don't know his name because I haven't seen Hello Bikini Bottom. So if, if you guys know who his name is, I'll probably look him up on ESB. But yes, yeah, it's, it's the guy from Hello Hello Bikini Bottom. Uh, like I said earlier, there was lots of violence going on in this episode. Mr. Krabs and, and Plane had to work together, and there's like this gag where Plankton kept coughing and he had like a piece of hair in his throat. And so Mr. Krabs dealt it at the end. Overall, this episode was actually pretty good. It was actually not bad, very violent, but funny at the same time. Well, I hope you guys enjoy my review for The Krusty Bucket. I'll see you guys tomorrow with Sandy's Nutty Nieces. And this will be, like I said in the beginning of this review, will be the last time I'll be showing my face in these reviews because I'm tired of showing my face. I would rather talk over the title cards of the episode so you guys will have a much better experience. Goodbye. Hello everyone, EB the Original Master here, and I'm back with a brand new SpongeBob SquarePants review. So today I'm here to review the new episode that just aired in Russia, Squids on a Bus. And uh, yeah, so before I get any further, I'm gonna go ahead and provide the link given to me by Luke V. And so you guys don't have to beg for that. I'll just give it to you guys right away so you guys won't complain about it and whatnot. So uh, Squids on a Bus is actually was actually a really funny episode where Squidward and a bus driver trades places for the day because um, Squidward just didn't like the way how the bus driver was doing his job. So Squidward becomes the bus driver while the bus driver becomes a cashier at the Krusty Krab. And this is where the episode started to have some of his very great moments. Uh, SpongeBob and Patrick doing shenanigans on the bus, such as swinging on the... I don't know what the things are called. It's a thing that you like hold on top of the bus. I'm just gonna call it a rope. I, I don't know what it's called. I'm I'm not a bus expert, but yeah. Um, there's actually another funny scene in the episode where SpongeBob was putting an exact change to pay for Squidward on the bus. It was actually a really funny gag. And this episode just had some very great funny jokes in there. Uh overall this episode was pretty darn good. And I'm going to give this a high good. It's actually a really funny episode. It was very great. And I think you guys might like it. And no, I'm not going to go way into details with this episode because I'm trying to avoid spoilers. And I want you guys to see it for yourself. So that's the overall episode. It was pretty good. And I really hope you guys will like it if you guys check the episode out for yourselves. If you don't like it, then that's fine. It's your opinion. Well, that's my review on Squiz on a Bus. I know it's pretty short, but I wanted to keep it that way so you guys could watch the episode for yourselves. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time with more SpongeBob reviews. Hello, everyone. EB, the Original Master here, and I'm back with a brand new SpongeBob SquarePants review. Now, before I begin, I know I stated in my Krusty Bucket review that will be the last review I'll ever do my web camera with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the web camera for this video, because why not? You know, I should might as well just do webcam videos for now with these reviews. I don't even know why I said... I'll stop doing webcams for these SpongeBob reviews. But anyways, I'm here to review Sandy's Nutty Nieces, which just came out today. And boy, do I have to say, this episode was actually a lot funnier than I was expecting. So, yeah. So, in basically in this episode, uh, SpongeBob has to babysit Sandy's three nieces. And we actually got in lots of brand new characters for this, sh for this episode exclusively. So, um, we actually got to, to see uh, Sandy's sister in this episode, which is uh, Rosie Cheeks which is actually this obese um, female squirrel, which I thought she was a pretty funny character. She kind of had like a very rough voice in a way. And uh, Sandy's nieces as characters were actually quite entertaining. Um, for them being children, they actually were really stronger than I expected because I wasn't actually expecting these nieces to be that strong. Well, I mean, since they're from Texas and they have Sandy's um, culture and, and strength, then I guess 
they have to be the same strength as her, very strong. So now I'm going to talk about some of my favorite moments of this episode. Uh, like I said earlier, Sandy's nieces were actually pretty funny characters. Um, they do have names, but I'm not going to recite their names just because that, that's not what I'm here for. I'm just here to tell you guys my thoughts of the episode. Uh, Sandy's nieces were actually quite entertaining. Uh, they were strong. They would rhyme their words out, which I thought it was pretty funny. And uh, SpongeBob babysitting them was quite entertaining. And then the ending of the episode just didn't make any sense to me because Sandy told SpongeBob the first thing of babysitting her nieces is not to babysit them. Then what was the point? I mean, I, I guess Sandy tried to tell that to SpongeBob, but SpongeBob didn't listen to her. I guess that was the case, but if that was the case, then okay, I guess SpongeBob didn't have to babysit Sandy's nieces all along. But even though if he even though he didn't have to babysit them, this episode was still quite enjoyable. It was very funny. Had some really good jokes, such as SpongeBob um uh telling Sandy his experience with babysitting Patrick. That was pretty funny. And this episode just had some really good jokes in there. So yeah, Sandy's Nutty Nieces is, is a really good episode. I recommend you guys see this episode. I'll drop the link in the description below. This episode had air in the UK and is actually quite entertaining and laughable. Well, I'll see you guys tomorrow with the last episode for the UK and Ireland premieres, Insecurity Guards. And I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, Evie the Original Master here, and today I'm here to review the last episode of the UK and Ireland weekly premieres of Spongebob Squarepants and Security Guards. So um, in this episode, Squidward tries to sneak in a art, a piece of artwork in the museum, but it turns out to be that Patrick and Spongebob are playing security guards to basically take care of the place. So um, overall, I was actually giving a, uh, a decision of either giving this episode a low, good, or an okay is because that even though this episode had some really good moments in it, I wouldn't say it's my favorite of season 12. Now, don't get me wrong. The episode did have some of its really great funny moments, such as uh, the the teacher uh, telling his students to, to stand in a single file line while they kept running through the museum. I thought that gag was a little funny. Uh, the woolly mammoth or the snail mammoth. I thought that joke was pretty funny. You got Spongebob and Patrick on the snail mammoth, and he was moving very slowly while they were trying to catch Squidward. But the whole episode, in my opinion, was just Spongebob and Patrick just admiring the museum, becoming security guards. And it wasn't until later into the episode where Squidward tries to sneak in his painting. It could have been a lot better if we had, like, background shots of Squidward trying to sneak in into the, to the museum while trying to hang his painting. But it didn't seem that we got in that. But they had to throw it in the way at the very end. So, Squirt was able to hang his painting. He got arrested at the end. And then the painting grew a smile. And that was in Security Guards. Overall, I might just give this an okay, in my opinion. I've just, I've made my final decision. It's okay. It's because that even though it had some great moments in it, I wish Squirt was more in the picture in this episode. Like, he'll, he'll probably be in the background somewhere trying to hang up the painting. But... He only appeared at the beginning of the episode. <clears throat> Spongebob and Patrick then become security guards, uh, watching over the place. And then until the very end, that's when Squidward tries to sneak in his painting. But again, like I said earlier, I wish it could have had more background shots of Squidward. Like, you got, you got Squidward in the background, I don't know, trying to, like, sneak around the place. That could have added some comical values. But from what we got in, it was just okay, in my opinion. So, hope you guys enjoyed my review for Insecurity Guards. I'll see you guys next time with another Spongebob review if one comes out in the United States. And since I've seen these new episodes already, and these episodes are going to be airing in the United States, and Security Guards, Sandy Nighty Nieces, King Plankton, and Stormy Weather, there's no need for me to go back and watch those again, because I can just watch them anytime through Google Drive. Well, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, Evie the Original Master here, and I'm here to review the brand new Spongebob episode that just aired today at 11 a.m., a broken Alarm and Senior Discount. So the first episode that aired was a Senior Discount, and I'm here to give you guys my thoughts on the episode. So in Senior Discount, Mr. Krabs is annoyed that Old Man Jenkins is at the Krusty Krab yet again holding up his business, meaning that he's he's taken a long time to order stuff. Uh, he he eats very slowly. He's very very musty and whatnot. And Spongebob keeps telling Mr. Krabs that he likes Oltman Jenkins and he likes him to eat there more often. Well, that was a case in the episode, but 
I'll, I'll get to that more of that later. So the running gag of this episode is Oatman Jenkins telling Mr. Krabs to respect his elders. And it's a very funny gag. It's because I thought this entire episode, you got Oatman Jenkins telling Mr. Krabs to respect his elders. And I thought that joke was pretty funny. Uh, the highlight for this episode, in my opinion, was the ending where Mr. Krabs and Oldman Jenkins had a war with their different relatives, which was actually a really interesting uh, climax for this episode, where Mr. Krabs and Oldman Jenkins kept bringing their family members from the dead, such as their great-great-grandparents, their grandparents and whatnot, and I thought that was actually a really interesting climax for the episode. So overall, Senior Discount was a low good. It's not my favorite of the season, it's because that even though this episode was very great, I wouldn't say it's the funniest, or I wouldn't say is the best of the season. I still think Stormy Weather is way better than uh, Senior Discount as my favorite season 12 episode. Now moving on to Broken Alarm, which I find this episode to be very, very creative and entertaining. So in Broken Alarm, SpongeBob's alarm clock is broke, and he keeps coming to work late, and so he has to buy himself a new alarm clock. Now, what made this episode really interesting was the different alarm clocks that SpongeBob bought from the store. Uh, one alarm clock he had was a jellyfish nest with jellyfish coming out of it. Another alarm clock he bought was a punching bag. And another one he also bought was a fire hydrant. So all of these alarm clocks had their own unique ways of waking SpongeBob up in the morning, and none of them seemed to work. Now, the highlight of this episode was obviously the climax, and this is where the episode starts to shine the most. Uh, we had some original new music for this episode. Uh, the ending where uh, the, the different alarm clocks built made like a contraption and tried to send SpongeBob to work. And um, so SpongeBob was actually fast asleep while working on the job while these alarm clocks were trying to do his job while he was asleep. And this was actually the best part of the episode. So yeah, overall, Broken Alarm, in my opinion, is way better than Senior Discount. It was very creative, had some good music, and uh, the jokes were absolutely very interesting in this one, too. So Broken Alarm gets a high good, while Senior Discount just gets a low good. Well, hope you guys enjoyed my review for Senior Discount and Broken Alarm, and um, I have an update video coming out later in the next week. So next week, I have a very important update video regarding to... SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout, and videos that are coming soon. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys next time with more videos. Hello everyone, EB the Original Master here with a brand new SpongeBob SquarePants review. So today I'm here to review the new episode that just came out this morning at 11am, Karen's Baby. And this episode was actually very interesting, and it was actually very funny, and had some very great moments in it. So um, in Karen's Baby, uh, Karen and Plankton gets their very first baby delivered to the mail and Karen realizes how fast the baby is growing. So what makes this episode really unique is that um, the way how uh, the baby um, basically uh, gets older is by upgrading, which actually makes sense. It's because that when you do an upgrade, that means you get new features, which is very interesting for this episode. Um, I really do love the climax of this episode where uh, Chip, uh, the name of Karen's and Plankton's baby, um, basically... Uh, meets up with these other robots who wants to use his parts, and I found that scene to be very interesting. And then what was funny is that at the ending of the episode where um, uh, Chip was going to college, uh, I found that to be pretty funny because I, cause I was curious of how is he an adult that quick? Like, he didn't have a beard or anything. He didn't sound like an adult. He kind of still had his voice when he was a teenager, and I thought that was pretty funny. And I'm surprised that this episode lacked Spongebob. Spongebob only had one screen time in this whole episode, and then the rest of the episode was just Karen, uh, Chip, and Plankton, which is actually a breath of fresh air, because, you see, the crew can do lots of stuff without having Spongebob in the picture all the time, and I want them to do that for the near feature, is because just because Spongebob's the main character, he doesn't have to be involved in everything, and that's what I loved about Karen's baby, what's the lack of Spongebob. Overall, this was a very good episode, it was very funny, and I enjoyed it. So I'm going to give Karen's Baby a high good. Well, hope you guys enjoyed my review on Karen's Baby. I'll see you guys next time with a new SpongeBob review. If Nickelodeon drops out another trailer or a promo video or something. But I'll let you guys know that in a future video. Bye. Hello, everyone. This is EB, the Sponge Reviewer here. And today I'm here to review a new episode of SpongeBob. 
that was going to come out on March 7th, which is uh, Shell Games and uh, Jolly Lodgers. But today, um, Shell Games aired in the UK, thanks to one of my Discord friends, and they have dropped the link for me to provide. Well, not to provide, for me to take a look at it and review it. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and review this episode. Now, um, this is actually another one of those episodes that has never been done before in the show, which is to introduce a new type of sea creature or animal. And this episode is about turtles. That's, it. That's right. This is the very first Splendor episode to have a actual turtle in the show. For it to be 12 seasons, they've decided to throw in a turtle. So props to originality. So in this episode, um, a turtle by the name of Tony... Uh, yeah, very generic name. You expect it would be a tiger, right? You see what I did there? But anyways, so yeah, this turtle, his name is Tony, and he's actually going out to meet up with these other turtles who are these two females. And uh, it turns out to be that Patrick's rock um, turned out to be this turtle shell all this time. So there's lots of scenes in the episode where Tony and Patrick are not getting along with each other. Um, I thought those shenanigans were pretty funny. Um, if there's one little nitpick I would like to say for this episode, um, towards the climax, which I will not spoil, I won't say what's, what happened in the climax, but I wish that they've added little cartoon sound effects in it. I mean, there were cartoon sound effects, but I'm, I'm trying to explain this without actually going to spoiler territory, but it's towards the end of the episode where Patrick and Tony were fighting each other and they were like doing things that I wish that they could have added, like, funny cartoon sound effects whenever they, I don't know, like, bump into objects and stuff like that. But overall, without spoiling this episode, all I'm going to say is that, yeah, this episode was actually really entertaining. I actually like this episode. Um, I like the name, Shell Games. Um, it's a pretty interesting name. Uh, I liked Tony. He was a, he was a pretty decent character. Um, the two other female turtles in the episode, they're all right. But, and, again, um, there's another one of those episodes where Spongebob didn't play a big role. And I really want them to continue doing that, because just because your show is called Spongebob doesn't mean Spongebob has to always appear in the episodes, you know? And even though he only had one screen time, this whole, this entire episode was pretty decent. I actually liked this episode. It was, it was pretty good. It's, I'm gonna give this episode a, I'm gonna just give it a right off the ground solid good. It's just right there in the middle. It's a solid good. It's a pretty good episode. And I definitely, rec definitely do guys recommend watching it when it airs in the United States. If you're from the US, it's airing on March 7th in the US at 11 a.m. along with Jolly Lodgers. So when, when May 7th comes around, I will review Jolly Lodgers since I haven't seen that yet. And yes, you guys, I am aware that these episodes has already aired in other countries in English. But that was back at a time where I really didn't pay much attention to that. It's because that, I, if I want to be totally honest, I've been completely avoiding information about Spongebob lately because I'm focusing on other things. But I will try my hardest to keep you guys updated with these new reviews, even though I'm still watching the show. So that's my review on Shell Games. It's a pretty good episode. And I hope you guys find an enjoyment of it when it airs in the United States on March 7th. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time with a new ep And I'll see you guys on March 7th. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. I'll see you guys again on March 7th with Jolly Lodgers. So see you later. Hello, everyone. This is EB, the original master here. And today I'm here to review um, a new episode of SpongeBob that just aired today in the United Kingdom. In fact, we're actually getting a whole bunch of new episodes coming out in the United Kingdom, which will be soon airing in the United States um, starting on September 14th. And this episode is Mind the Gap. So um, before I get any further with this episode... Um, this episode was actually a really interesting one, and I actually really did love the premise of the episode, where uh, Squidward Tentacles decides to close the gap in SpongeBob's teeth just for him to live a much better life. So, uh, because of this, SpongeBob becomes a jazz singer, and he actually attends a jazz club, where he becomes very popular from. And I actually really predicted this episode because um, when I saw screenshots of it, I pictured Spongebob becoming a jazz singer, and I basically predicted the episode. So, it's pretty interesting if you can predict things. So, yeah, everyone in the jazz clubs enjoys Spongebob's jazz singing, and Squidward becomes to the point where he thinks 
he isn't cool anymore. So he decides to get rid of SpongeBob by basically trying to ruin his reputation. So throughout the episode, um, Squidward Tentacles tries to fix SpongeBob's gap while for him to continue to become uh, the jazz singer that he is. So of course, Squidward doesn't get his way and things doesn't go out right to him. Thus the episode ending in a very brief note. I did love the premise of the episode. It was actually really interesting, but um, the ending itself was pretty bland in my opinion. I wish they could have did something better with the ending, but for the episode itself, for a, for a premise like SpongeBob becoming a jazz singer because um, his teeth changes his personality is actually a really unique concept. So overall, I'm gonna give Mind the Gap a a pretty. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a a solid good. For now on, I'm gonna do my ratings as a low, a solid, and a high. So you know what. I'm just going to give it a good. I'm just going to call it a good. So if, if it's in the middle, I'm not going to say low or high. I'm just say good, okay, meh, or bad. And if it's either a high or a low, I will say that in the episode in my review. Well, that's Mind the Gap. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another episode that is coming out, which is SpongeBob and Random Land. And then after that, follow-up is SpongeBob's Bad Habit on Thursday. And then Friday, we're getting Handemonium. These are all airing in the UK. And I'm very excited for these, to see these episodes and review them out for you guys so you guys don't have to wait for them to air in the United States. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time with more SpongeBob reviews. Hello, everyone. This is EB the Sponge Clipper here, and this is my very first SpongeBob review here on the channel. So today I'm here to review the new episode that just aired this morning on uh, November 23rd, 2019, uh, Dirty Bubble Returns. So, yeah, this is actually another episode that has the word returns in the title. It was very generic. Um, the title really isn't all that great, but the episode itself was actually really good. So in this episode, um, the Dirty Bubble causes trouble all throughout Bikini Bottom and gets sent to jail, and he is, for now on, has to do clean deeds in order to be a nicer person. And this is actually a really interesting concept, is because that um, in the past, um, the Dirty Bubble has just been this one villain would always cause trouble but this time he has an alter ego named the clean bubble so he's basically a clean version of himself he's a lot nicer he gets a job at the Krusty Krab cleaning dishes and whatnot and SpongeBob happens to enjoy it then of course things doesn't go right and then he turns evil all throughout Bikini Bottom and so SpongeBob has to stop him by cleaning him up I actually really do love the concept of this episode it was actually really clever and it was something that we've never seen before in the show so it was actually a really original idea for SpongeBob um, what I liked about this episode was, um, just si similarly to Sandy's Nutty Nieces, um, the Dirty Bubble rhymed every time he spoke in the episode, which I thought was pretty funny, and I actually do love his laugh, his laugh is very funny, um, the rhyming was okay, the laugh, his evil laugh was pretty funny, but yeah, overall, Dirty Bubble Returns was a really good episode, I really enjoyed this one, it was awesome, and yeah. Now, um, for next Saturday's episode, the 30th of November, which is The Hankering, I'm afraid I will not be able to review that episode. It's because that I'll be returning home from my family um, trip um, for Thanksgiving, so I will not be able to watch The Hankering when it airs on Nickelodeon next Saturday on the 30th. So I'm going to have to find another way of watching it if somebody provides it out there on Nickelodeon or something, but... Yeah, if I do get my hands on the hankering, I'll review it as soon as possible and have the review out. And also, um, Plankton's Old Chum is also airing next Saturday. Um, I think it's next Saturday, I believe. Yeah, it's next Saturday. Wait, is it? Hmm, I, I think it is. But I might have to go back and check to see if it's airing on November 30th, because November 30th is next Saturday, and I need to make sure nothing is airing on that day to make sure if I'm right. But if I am right, then okay, I won't be able to see it. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching my review on Dirty Bubble Returns. I have a new Twitter account exclusive for the channel called EB the Sponge Clipper. I'll drop <clears throat> the link in the description below if you guys want to follow me on Twitter on EB the Sponge Clipper. I'll be posting my SpongeBob reviews there and some random screenshots of episodes just for fun. But yeah, that's all I have to announce for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and more SpongeBob reviews will be happening here on EB the Sponge Clipper. So thank you guys for watching, and have a great Saturday. Hello everyone, this is Evie, the Original Master here, and today I'm here to review the new episode of Spongebob that just aired today at 11, uh, Jolly Lodgers. 
So uh, I finally got a chance to see this episode, and I'm here to give you guys my thoughts on it. Well, in this episode, uh, Squidward um, rents a hotel to be alone from SpongeBob and Patrick while his house is being infested with sea urchins. And so when Squidward goes to this hotel, um, it appears that a jellyfishing convention is being held there, and SpongeBob and Patrick has been constantly been annoying Squidward throughout this entire episode. Um, if I want to be totally honest, um, this episode did have some really funny jokes in there, but honestly, I think the highlight of the entire episode is the actual jellyfishing convention itself. Um, the first half of the episode wasn't all that great in my opinion, but I did enjoy um, the shark. Uh, there was like this shark guy who who thought he was a, who thought he was he was a manager, but he actually plays one on TV. So he's actually a shark that plays a manager on TV, and I do believe that's the same shark from um, Drive Happy, the shark dealership guy. That's probably the same character, but he's probably running a hotel. And I actually found that joke to be pretty funny. So yeah, um, Jolly Rogers had a weak opening, and it it gotten better towards the end. And I have to say that this episode had some really good Easter eggs here and there. Uh, Kevin. Uh, the sea cucumber from the episode I'm Your Biggest Fanatic made a small cameo, and uh, the and the guy who had the giant um, who got stung by Big Lenny, that guy, look, I'm not here for nostalgia. I don't care who his name is, so I really don't care. I, I mean, if you think, oh, how you, how you watch Spongebob, you don't know this character's name. Look, I'm not here for nostalgia. I'm not here to be a big fanboy or anything. I'm just gonna say what I think it is, okay? So if you correct me, congratulations. I really don't care. But overall, Jolly Lodgers was a fun episode. Like I've said, the, the beginning was was pretty okay. Um, the the shark dealership dude the, who was running the hotel was pretty funny. And um, the, the climax was the best part of the episode, in my opinion. That was the whole highlight for me. I'm going to give Jolly Lodgers a high good. It was actually a really good episode. Um, thank you guys for watching my review on Jolly Lodgers, and I know there are some other episodes that aired in the United Kingdom that I haven't seen yet. I've already, I'm have already, i already aware that Swamp Mates had already aired in the United Kingdom, and I have yet to see that one, so maybe I'll probably ask one of my Discord friends for the link for the episode so I can watch that real quick and have the review out before it airs in the United States, because at this point, I don't know what's going to be airing in April, so I'm just going to watch Swamp Mates on another time if I have the chance to. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is E.B. the Sponge Reviewer here. And today I'm here to review the brand new episode of Spongebob that just aired this morning. Uh, Who Are Zoo and Bitty Sitting. So um, both of these episodes were absolutely pretty good, and I'm here to give you guys my thoughts on them. So in Who Are Zoo, uh, Spongebob and Patrick builds a zoo out of bubbles. And they invite everyone in Bikini Bottom to take a look at the zoo. So the reason why they built the zoo out of bubbles is because that SpongeBob got kicked out of the actual zoo for um, messing around with the animals and whatnot. And there's a zookeeper in the episode who's very crazy and very cartoony. And I actually like the zookeeper. He was a pretty interesting character. Um, I really love the climax of this episode where um, the bubble animals started attacking SpongeBob and Patrick, so they had to bring in the real animals from the zoo as a backup. I thought the climax was very epic and well executed. And yeah, overall, Who Are Zoo was a really interesting episode, and I'm actually am glad that they actually went back to another concept like this because we haven't had a zoo episode or a zoo focused episode since The Smoking Peanut. I'm not counting the string, it's because even though the episode had a zoo in it, it wasn't focusing on a zoo, because that's not the main focus of the episode. Just because the zoo appeared in the episode doesn't mean it was the main focus, but you get the idea. So yeah, overall, I'm going to give Who Are Zoo a high good. Now we got Biddy sitting, uh, Spongebob and Patrick uh, babysits um, baby prunes or the, the or the old lady worm character from chocolate with nuts if you remember chocolate with nuts you'll remember the old lady worm creature in the episode who had a very very scratched up rouchy out voice and she was in this episode and she was actually really interesting because um 
Spongebob and Patrick thought they were babysitting a actual baby, but it turned out to be that she was an old lady. So, yeah. So, yeah, babysitting was another good episode from the new episodes that came out today. And, yeah, so both Who Are Zoo and Baby Sitting were interesting episodes, and I give them both a high good. Well, that's my short review on uh, Betty Sitting and Who Are Zoo. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this review, and I'll see you guys next time with another episode that either comes out. So, yeah, I'm only uploading videos on Evie the Sponge Reviewer when a new episode comes out. That's going to be the new schedule, because you're not going to be seeing that much videos on this channel. This is dedicated to SpongeBob reviews, and I'm going to keep it that way. I may do updates every now and then, but from for now, this whole channel will be dedicated to episodes on new content. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, uh, EB the Original Master here, and um, I am at a hotel room. If you guys didn't know that I'm in a hotel right now, and uh, I'm at Tennessee, and I'm here to give you guys my review on uh, SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout. So yes, I was able to see the episode this evening at 6 p.m. since I was here in Central Time and I completely forgot that in Central Time new episodes air on Nickelodeon either at 6 p.m. 10 a.m. because this is Central Time and so I'm in a different time zone so I'm gonna make this review as quick as possible so I can have it out to you guys so um, I didn't get a chance to see the opening of Splinter's Big Birthday Blowout the first time I saw it when it had the 6 p.m. premiering but the episode premiered again at 7 p.m. here in Central Time Zone, so I was able to watch the episode in its entirety. So, um, we already know the plot for this episode. It's uh, SpongeBob's birthday, and him and Patrick are going to the surface world while everybody in Bikini Bottom are preparing for his party. Now, um, the episode alone did have some of his great moments in it, but I kind of felt like that the crew could have done something way better with this plot. But it honestly seemed like it was a rehash of of a uh, party pooper pants from the third season. So what I mean by this is that in the episode, while Sandy and everybody else were preparing for SpongeBob's party, everybody else kept screaming surprise, even though the SpongeBob wasn't there yet. And um, since um, SpongeBob was not there, lots of bad things are happening, such as people are keep yelling surprise, they keep eating the birthday cake. They keep doing bad things, and it kind of felt like a rehash of Party Hooper Pants. But don't get me wrong, this episode did have some of his great moments, such as some of the live-action segments, where um, the main plot of this episode was, even though it's SpongeBob's birthday party, and he's going up to the surface world while everybody is preparing for his party, uh, Patchy the Pirate has a main segment where he's actually going to Bikini Bottom to send SpongeBob a birthday gift, and I actually did find that plot to be really interesting. Um, now, moving on to my highlights to this episode, some of my favorite moments in this episode. Well, my first favorite moment was uh, Beanie McBean's performance. If you guys don't know who Beanie McBean is, is this guy in a bean costume who comes out of a can and starts throwing beans at people. I thought that scene was pretty funny. Um, I, also, I actually liked the trusty slab scenes, which was the live action segment of the voice actors playing their live action selves. I, thought, I found those segments to be pretty interesting. And also, like, the ending of this episode, where Apache's head was in a birthday present, and they all start singing the Spongebob theme song, but in a happy birthday format, which I thought was pretty interesting. Overall, this episode um, is not the best of season 12. This episode was very good, but I could have, but it could have been better if they didn't do the plot where everybody freaking keeps yelling surprise, and even though Spongebob's not there... And I just really didn't like that plot all that much. But it didn't keep me from not enjoying the episode. The episode did have some of its great moments in it, like I've already mentioned. Uh, SpongeBob's parents finally returned since season 8. I'm so glad they brought back his parents. Uh, a lot of cameos from past episodes and references, such as the pizza delivery box from uh, Pizza Delivery. You have uh, the Chief from Murray Man of Bronco Boy 5. All these great references to past episodes. But again, those references are only there just to build up nostalgia. And yeah. So overall, Spongebob's Big Birthday Blowout, in my opinion, is a low good of an episode. It's a low good. It's not a bad episode at all, but I wish it could have been a lot better if um, the plot was handled a little bit differently. Uh, Spongebob's house wasn't all destroyed at the end. They could have done something better with that. But the ending alone was still pretty entertaining, in my opinion. 
Well, hope you guys enjoyed my review for SpongeBob's Big Birthday. Uh, sorry, SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout. Since I'm not on my laptop and I'm recording on my phone, I will not be able to provide a thumbnail for this video until I return back from Tennessee. And yeah, so I will provide a thumbnail for this video when I return back. So for the meantime, you'll be seeing a picture of my face as the thumbnail until I return home to actually upload the thumbnail for this review. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time with more SpongeBob. Bye. Hello everyone, this is EB, the original master here, and I'm here to provide another Spongebob review for you guys this evening. So today I'm here to review Spongebob in Random Land, which is aired today in the United Kingdom, and I've just finished watching the episode, and I'm here to give you guys my overall thoughts of it. So in this episode, uh, Spongebob and Mr. Krabs, oh, sorry, uh, Spongebob and Squidward, are delivering a Krabby Patty to a different part of Bikini Bottom, known as Random Land, where uh, the reverse of rules applies here in this land. So, um, it's another episode where um, the creative team does um, wacky character designs and uh, obscure locations. And um, I want, if I want to be real here about this episode, um, even though the episode did it pr did promise what it was about SpongeBob in Random Land and them delivering the Krabby Patty to this one particular customer, I wouldn't say it's the greatest thing out there. Um, the reason why I say this is because that SpongeBob SquarePants have did this many times in the past, where we visit, where we've seen many wacky locations, such as a place where everything looked very obscure. It doesn't look all natural, it looks all wacky and zany, and it could leave up the creative potential, but again, it's something we've already seen before in the show. So I wouldn't say this idea is all that great and all, and um, if I want to be real here, this episode was just okay in my opinion. Um, there were some pretty great okay moments in the episode, such as um, SpongeBob, such as that weird Custom, that weird person in a uh, random land taking the Krabby Patty and um, he got the different art styles and whatnot. But I wouldn't say this is a good episode in my opinion. Um, it was just okay. It's because that it didn't left me amazed or anything. It's because that, like I said earlier, we've already had dozens of episodes where SpongeBob and company encountered or, or visited a place that is very wacky and zany and. SpongeBob Random Land is no different, and yes, I do I do love the visuals and all, but again, it's something we've already seen before, and it just doesn't seem all that original to me. So, SpongeBob Random Land is just an okay for me, just because that, even though it, it had some great things in it, I wouldn't say it's the good. I wouldn't say it's up there as the best. But, um, so far. I will have to say Mind the Gap is slightly better than this episode because of its really unique concept of Spongebob's teeth and all. But an episode about Spongebob and, and company visiting a, a really weird, zany, wacky world or something, we've already seen it before, and I wasn't really that great of a fan of this episode, to be honest. Um, some of the jokes really weren't that funny to me. And yeah... Spongebob Random Land is just okay, in my opinion. I'm gonna give this episode a 7.5 or something. But yeah. Well, on the bright side, at least, Sandy Cheese is gonna be appearing in the next episode, Spongebob's Bad Habit. How do I know? Well, uh, there's actually um, ending credits for this episode that actually showed the characters list for Spongebob's Bad Habit, and it says that Sandy is gonna be in the episode, so I'm actually I'm looking forward to that, to see how Sandy will play her character in Spongebob's Bad Habit, which is tomorrow, of course. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this review, and I'll see you guys next time with more Spongebob reviews, hopefully in the future, of course. Sorry if this review is all, all, all over the place, I'm just sorry, I'm just really into things, but yeah, thank you guys for watching, I'll see you guys next time, bye. Hello everyone, EB the Original Master here, with a new Spongebob review for you guys today. So, uh, Spongebob's Bad Habit just aired today in the United Kingdom, and I'm here to give you guys my thoughts on the episode. So, um, in this episode, Spongebob is having a terrible habit of biting his nails, and he needs to figure out why he's doing it. And, um, if I want to be real here about this episode, this is another one of those episodes that I'm really am not a big fan of. 
I just really didn't like this episode at all is because that it really wasn't that great. Because the majority of the episode was just SpongeBob constantly biting his nails, and then he starts having a fetish of biting other people's nails, and it was it just wasn't interesting. I mean, what's so interesting is seeing SpongeBob going all over town just biting other people's nails. I mean, do they really run out of ideas or something for this show? I guess I don't know. So uh, Sandy um, was in this episode to help SpongeBob out just for him to stop biting his nails. And when that when that didn't work out, he actually had to go to a doctor. And um, I actually really did like the twist of the ending of the episode that Hans was the doctor all along because he's a hand. And um, of course, so it, it kind of makes sense for Hans to be the doctor because he, he has fingernails and so that's what SpongeBob is doing. He's biting his fingernails. So... SpongeBob then ends up biting Hans' fingernails, and then Squidward then has the bad habit as well. Because it turned out to be that SpongeBob, all this time, the reason why he was biting his nails is because he was he was basically ha was having the mind of Squidward, because in the beginning of the episode, Squidward was very annoyed from his job, and SpongeBob ended up doing whatever Squidward was doing, basically repeating whatever he said to, to Hans. So, overall, SpongeBob's Bad Habit wasn't that interesting. It was a very bland episode, in my opinion. And I did, even though the, I actually, the ending was okay, but it wouldn't say, it wouldn't be my favorite of the episode. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give, um, SpongeBob's Bad Habit a meh. It was just meaty, it was just bare bones. It was just a bare bones, bare bones episode. Wasn't all that great. Didn't leave me amazed. And it was just boring because there's really nothing interesting here. It's just SpongeBob just biting his nails, and then he goes to a rampage and bite other people's nails. I mean, it just wasn't all that great or interesting. Well, that's my th thoughts on SpongeBob's bad habit. Well, tomorrow's the last day of the UK uh, SpongeBob episodes premieres, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with Handemonium. And then on Saturday, uh, Breakin is going to be airing in the United States, so if I happen to see that episode, I'll probably give you guys my thoughts of it if I come home on time to see it, is because that I'm going to be busy Saturday morning taking care of other things, but yeah, I'll let you guys know when that review comes out if I am available on that Saturday. But with that said, thank you guys for watching, I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, EB the Original Master here, and I am filming through my iPhone to give you guys another SpongeBob review. So today I'm here to review Handemonium, which is the last episode to air here in the United Kingdom. And uh, yeah, so I actually really enjoyed this episode. It was actually way better than the other episodes that I've watched, which was Bad Habit and SpongeBob and Random Land. So in this episode, uh, Plankton's chum bucket glove causes havoc throughout Bikini Bottom and is up to SpongeBob to bring in a handy friend to help out. So I actually really did like this episode a lot. Um... I love the opening premise of Mr. Krabs having a arm wrestle with a bunch of these tough guys. I actually really love that opening a lot. Um, I love the visuals in the episode where uh, Plankton created um, the Chum Bucket glove, where he actually brought his glove to life from the Chum Bucket. I actually did love the visuals. And I actually appreciated how the episode started off at a night setting, and then it progressed its way throughout the rest of the episode until... The climax was taking place during the day. Now, um, I've actually predicted a lot of things in this episode, such as Hans being the handy friend, is because it was pretty obvious. I mean, it, it, it wasn't no surprise to anybody that they would have predicted that Hans would have been in this episode. It made sense. He's a hand, and he's been around since the beginning of the show. Um, they did another SpongeBob theme song reference. It was okay. I wouldn't say it's great because we already seen the SpongeBob theme song referenced in Old Man Patrick and Sanitation and Sanity from season 11. And yeah, so overall, Handemonium was a really good episode. I really enjoyed it. I'm not going to spoil everything else about this episode. And yeah, well, that's all the episodes that are airing in the United Kingdom. And tomorrow we're going to get a break in. Also, Mind the Gap is also airing tomorrow in uh, the United States, but I've already seen um mind the gap and besides the only difference between the u.s version and the uk version is that in the u.s version they used a uh, square root use a drill to close the gap in spongebob's teeth 
while in the UK version, Squidward actually used his fingers because I think Nickelodeon US, I guess, probably created two scenes, one for the United States and one for the United Kingdom, but of course the UK just have weird rules. But with that said, that's all I have to say for Handemonium. It was a really good episode. I enjoyed it. And yeah, well, I'll see you guys tomorrow with Break-In. So yeah, see you later. Hello everyone, EB the Original Master here. And today I'm here to review uh, the new Splinter episode that just aired today, uh, Break-In. Uh, sorry if this review is coming out a little bit later in the afternoon. It's because that I was currently busy with things, so I couldn't see the episode on TV. But someone had provided a link, and I was able to watch it. And no, I'm not sharing it, so deal with it. So, in a break-in, uh, SpongeBob takes a break for the first time for the Krusty Krab, according to the plot, and uh, SpongeBob is basically not enjoying his break all that much until Mr. Krabs made a break room where SpongeBob had the time of his life in the break room. Yeah, I actually... I actually really did like this episode a lot. It was actually really funny. Um, I did love uh, the break room, obviously. That was that was the highlight for me. I loved how SpongeBob turned the break room into like a party house or something. That was pretty funny. Um, uh, and yeah, that's all I have to pretty much say about this episode. It was pretty good. It was a short because Handemonium, which is the episode paired with this episode, was a 15-minute episode. So, Breaking ended up being a short. And, um, yeah, this was actually a pretty decent short, and I liked it. So, I'm going to give a Breaking a... I'll give it a low good. I wouldn't say it's the best of the se of the season, because I, I still think Stormy Weather and Karen's Baby are up there as my favorites of season 12 so far. But Breaking, it was pretty entertaining, and it actually did get some laughs out of me. Well, hope you guys enjoyed my review for Breaking. Uh, I think the next big episode that is coming out is The Goofy Newbie, because I, be cause I do believe next weekend they're going to do Spongebob and Random Land. I might have to go back and check to see if that's the case. Don't correct me in the comments, because I can go and check to make sure if I'm right. I appreciate you guys uh, correcting me in the comments, but this is something that I can do on my own without any need of assistance or help, but yeah. So I do believe The Goofy Newbie is the next big new episode that is coming out in the United States. But yeah, that's all I have to say, you guys. Have a great Saturday, and I'll see you guys next time with the next SpongeBob review. Good evening, everyone. This is E.B. the Sponge Reviewer here. And today I'm here to review um, the new episode of SpongeBob SquarePants that aired today in the United States, uh, Boss for a Day. Now, um, if you guys didn't recall from my community post that I posted two weeks ago, this is the only episode that I'm going to be reviewing. Um, I am currently skipping through Pineapple RV is because that I don't want to see it. I only wanted to see Boss for a Day since that was the episode that I haven't seen yet of season 12. I've already seen Pineapple RV, but that was in Poland. I know I could have went back and watched the English version, but I decided not to because I just don't see a need to. So yeah, um, Boss for a Day is a pretty basic, simple episode of Spongebob where Spongebob becomes boss of the Krusty Krab after he carelessly made a mistake, causing Mr. Krabs to injure himself. So yeah, this episode is basically Spongebob becoming a boss of the Krusty Krab. Um, there were lots of antics going on in the episode and some somewhat good jokes. Um, I actually did like the opening a bit. Um, the way how Mr. Krabs got injured was pretty funny. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... I mean, if you don't want to be spoiled, I will put a spoiler warning in the description, but the ending of this episode, I mean, it was great, but I wouldn't say is the greatest thing in the show because it's another one of those things. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and spoil it. So I'm going to put a spoiler warning at the beginning of the episode, in the beginning of the video, saying spoiler warning, um, SpongeBob, boss for a day review, or if you don't want to be spoiled, I'm sorry. Click out of the video immediately. I'm not going to put a time stamp of when the spoiler will end because I don't see a need to. But anyways, Spongebob um, decides to make clones of himself so he can make more employees to help out on the Krusty Krab while Mr. Krabs is watching Spongebob screw up everything. So, yeah. 
again, I don't mind cloning episodes and all, but for, for the episode for what it is, I wouldn't say it's the greatest thing in the world, but it was pretty decent. I, didn't, I don't hate the episode at all, but I wouldn't say it's my favorite of season 12. It was, it was a pretty decent episode. It's not the greatest thing, in my opinion. It's because that, even though I like cloning episodes, cloning episodes are fun, but it's not really original. And besides, we already had an episode where SpongeBob cloned himself, and that was Copy Bob Dido Pants back in season 9. So, I mean... I, it could have been a lot better if Boss Four Day was, I don't know, Spongebob turning the restaurant into, like, a business complex. Like, he, like, I mean, that would have been a much better concept. But for what they have did, for what the crew done for Boss Four Day, it was all right for what it was. So, I'm going to give Boss Four Day, I'll just give it a, I'll give it an okay. I'll just give it an okay. I'll just say that at best. It's, it's an okay episode. Um, it's not nothing too offensive or anything, but I wouldn't say it's the greatest of the show, but it was okay for what it was. There were some good things in it, but I wouldn't say it's a good because, I mean, even though some of the jokes were funny, yeah, I wouldn't say it's the best of the show. So I'm just giving it an okay as of now. So that's it. That's my review for Boss for a day. Um, I'll see you guys next time with another review of um, a Nickelodeon website or some or TV network or those 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 Twitter accounts that that posts. Um, leaks for new episodes, or just check the SpongeBob official Twitter account to make sure if a new episode comes out in the future. But yeah, this is currently the new episode that is airing right now, along with Pineapple RV. Thank you guys for watching. That's my review, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Hello, everyone. EB, the original master here, and today I'm here to review the new SpongeBob SquarePants episode that just aired today at 11, uh, The Goofy Newbie. So, um, this episode was actually a very interesting one, where, uh, Patrick gets a job at Goofy Goobers, just so he could get, uh, free ice cream. And, um, I actually really enjoyed this episode, it, was, it actually had some very great, funny moments in there, and it actually gave us some interesting facts about this episode. Um, I loved, um, the whole concept of Patrick working at Goofy Goobers, of him doing all these jobs, such as dressing up as Goofy Goober himself, he had to, uh, make sure he makes ice cream correctly, so, uh, Spongebob actually comes in and helps him in this episode, which I actually found really entertaining. Um, if I have to be honest here, the highlight of this whole episode, in my opinion, was the history of Goofy Goober, it's because that we've seen Goofy Goober appearance in the, in the first Spongebob film, and we never gotten, like, a history or a backstory of how the restaurant became a thing, so they actually actually had a part of the episode where they actually told the history of Goofy Goober, which was really interesting, and that part of the episode alone was the highlight, and also the ending was a highlight too, but I will probably put the, the history of Goofy Goober as the number one highlight. I love the sepia tone that they used, and I loved how the time cards in this episode was that old time ragtime announcer guy reading the time cards, I thought that was clever. But yeah, overall, The Goofy Newbie was a fun episode, and I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna give this episode a high good. And yeah, this is actually another one of those good episodes from Season 12. Well, those are all of the new episodes that are coming out as of now. I'll keep you guys updated probably in a future video or so, but I probably mo most likely won't make a video announcing when these n other episodes are coming out. I'll probably do a community post or something, but I'll let you guys know. Well, hope you guys enjoyed my review on The Goofy Newbie. What are your thoughts on this episode? Please drop your opinions in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time with more Spongebob reviews. Hello everyone, this is EB, the original master here, and today I'm here to review the new Spongebob Squarepants episode that aired today here in the United States, The Ghost of Plankton and A Cabin in the Kelp. So both of these episodes are the Halloween episodes for season 12, and both episodes are actually really good. In fact, I actually enjoyed, um, I'm trying to think which one is better in my opinion, but I'll let you guys know in the review. So in The Ghost of Plankton, Plankton becomes a ghost, and he gets all the help he needs from the Flying Dutchman, and they actually learn lots of great things in this episode. Well, the Flying Dutchman teaches Plankton all about becoming a ghost, such as scaring people, um, shape-shifting, and all that great stuff. And I actually really did like The Ghost of Plankton. It was actually a really funny episode, especially um, the Flying Dutchman hitting Plankton with a mallet. I thought that was a pretty funny gag. Um, when I first watched the episode, I actually laughed at the funeral part of the episode, because there was actually a funeral happening at the Chum Bucket. So, uh, Spongebob shows up, and then he 
gives out his final words for Plankton. And then I just started laughing because it was just, it was just funny to me because I don't know why I just have a weird sense of humor, but that part of the episode had me laughing. Um, I love the time cards or yeah, I'm gonna call them time cards. It was like a, a gray stone texture with the flying Dutchman giving out the, the steps of how to become a ghost. I thought the time cards were pretty cool in this episode. And yeah, overall, The Ghost of Plankton was actually a really fun episode. I really enjoy, I re- I enjoyed it, and it was great. So I'm going to give The Flying... Uh, the Flying? What? Uh, the Ghost of Plankton. Yeah, The Ghost of Plankton. A, I'll give it a good. Yeah, I'll just give it a good. Now, um, A Cabin in the Kelp is another great episode. It's actually the sequel or the follow-up to Girls' Night Out, meaning that Mrs. Puff... Karen and Sandy, uh, the quote-unquote gal pals. I still don't like that word because it's so. It sounds like something that a teenager would say, not adults. Well, I wouldn't say Sandy is. I mean, Sandy is supposed to be an adult, but she doesn't act like one. She acts like a child because she, she probably is one. But yeah. So uh, they. So Pearl is the new member of the gal pals, and they basically go to a cabin out in the woods where SpongeBob joins in on the pranking fun. And I actually really did love the setup of this episode. I thought it was funny. Um, I actually enjoyed um, the part where you got Mrs. Puff, Sponge, yeah, SpongeBob. I- I'm so sorry if I'm screwing this up. I am. I apologize, you guys. I'm just messing up here. But yeah, um, I, I like the part where uh, Sp- where there are. You know what? I'm not even gonna say it anymore because I'm just gonna screw it up again. But yeah, I- I'll I'll drop it in the comments of what I'm trying to say here. But I'm not gonna attempt to say it again because I screwed it up twice. But yeah, so overall, A Cabin in the Cult was a good episode. I'm not going to go way into details of it. It's because that I just don't want to spoil it. So all I'm going to say is that A Cabin in the Cult is a good episode. It's a good Halloween episode. The ending was funny. I'm not going to say what the ending is because I don't want to spoil it. But yeah, thank you guys for watching these reviews. Uh, you, you know what? I'm, I'm done with this review. Bye. Hello, everyone. This is Evie, the Sponge Reviewer here. And today, I just got done watching uh, My Two Crabses, which is an episode that aired, I believe, in the UK in 2019, and I was given the link to. And, um, yeah, I'm here to give you guys my review of this episode. So, in My Two Crabses, the plot is very simple. Uh, Mr. Krabs is preparing for a date with uh, Mrs. Puff, but what ended up happening is that when he was um, tanning up in his office... Um, Spongebob and Patrick thinks he died, so he basically takes his carapace and fills it up with chum to, to actually bring him back to life again. So, this episode had lots of really funny moments in it. Um, I really did enjoy the climax of the episode. I won't spoil way too much of it. It's because that I don't want to go way into, too much into the episode, but all I can say is that the climax is pretty funny and it's actually pretty epic in my opinion. Um, some of the things that I could probably say that it was totally unnecessary were some of the butt jokes, I guess, but it's Spongebob and there's lots of butt jokes in the show, so that really shouldn't be all that a surprise to me, but I think there were some, I think there was a little bit of too much of those butt scenes, but it wasn't all that bad because the show did it many times, so yeah. Overall, My Two Crabs was a pretty good episode, I enjoyed it. Um, I reviewed this episode without going any further into it, and yeah, so I'm gonna give this episode a good. It was a pretty good episode. Alright, so that's my review on My Two Crabses, and FYI, um, the Spongebob Squarepants Season 12 DVD is actually coming out in January of next year, in 2021. So, yeah, so, and it's pretty weird because Nickelodeon hasn't finished airing the rest of Season 12, so I don't know why they're releasing the DVD that soon, but... I guess they just don't care anymore because we all know that Nickelodeon is bad at advertising and they just don't care about their properties anymore. So, oh well. All right, that's my review on My Two Crabses, and I'll see you guys next time with another review if I happen to stumble across one and review it before it airs on Nickelodeon because at this point, I'm ready to review more new episodes of SpongeBob that are in English for season 12. Goodbye. Hello everyone, this is Evie the Sponge Reviewer here, and today I'm here to review Knock Knock Who's There and Pat Heart Squid. So in Knock Knock Who's There, um, Mr. Krabs offers Spongebob to watch over his house while he's out on a convention. 
And um, so basically he gives SpongeBob all these rules such as to not answer the door for anybody and to not go into his bedroom, which where all of his private stuff is at. So this episode had lots of, I guess, one-liners and puns, mostly done by SpongeBob, which I found to be okay, I guess, is because uh, these are just little small gags, and I don't think these jokes are meant to be laughed out loud jokes, is because that none of the jokes um, could be funny to most people, but they were pretty one-liner jokes, like... I'll just I'll just throw out a, a quick example of one of the one-liner jokes that the episode had, and that was SpongeBob not keeping his feet on the ground of Mr. Krabs's bedroom, basically. So he kept he kept making jokes about that. Um, there were also um, kind of somewhat references to past episodes I can think of, like um, little spoilers. Um, there's a scene in the episode where SpongeBob discovers. Um, picture frames of knots in um, Mr. Krabs's frames, and so when he pulled on the string of the knots, um, it basically removed um piece of the frame, and that kind of reminded me of the string, um, when uh, SpongeBob discovered a piece of string on Squidward's shirt, and every time he pulled on the string, um, piece of the shirt um came off of Squidward. So that's kind of of a I think that's kind of a reference to that episode. I mean, that's kind of what it reminded me of. So I'm gonna call that as a reference. So, um, so the climax of the episode is basically Mr. Krabs trying to return home, and then SpongeBob thinks that Mr. Krabs is a robber, so he actually hires Patrick to help along. So, overall, Knock Knock Who's There was, it was pretty okay, I guess. Um, there were a little bit of funny jokes there. Um, there's actually another funny joke that I will, that I won't spoil, but you'll find out on your own when you watch the episode yourself. So yeah, I'm gonna give, so Knock Knock Who's There was okay. Alright, so the next episode is Pat Hart Squid, and in this episode, Squidward's house gets destroyed while trying to stop SpongeBob and Patrick from being annoying, and so Patrick decides to offer him a place to stay, and ever since um, Patrick gave Squidward this offer, Squidward pretty much wants Patrick to act like him, so in the episode, Patrick acts like Squidward, and Squidward acts like Patrick, and the two kind of drives each other nuts, and it was, it was pretty interesting, I, I have to say, um, there were some really, um, f funny antics in the episode, such as, um, Squidward trying to get used to living in Patrick's house, and of course, um, this is one of those episodes where, of course, uh, Patrick gets all the attention, tries to act like Squidward, everybody, um, admires Patrick, pretending to be like Squidward, and this makes Squidward very jealous. We've seen this dozens of times in the show before. Squidward is another example of an episode where Squidward is getting all the where Squidward isn't getting all the attention and he feels jealous about it, so he tries to ruin that other person's fame. So, it's nothing original, but again, it's still um, pretty interest, interesting, I guess. So, that's all I have to say with Pat Hart Squid. I'm gonna give this episode a... Eh, I guess... It's a low good, I guess. I don't know, but it's 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 nothing, anything special whatsoever. But it's okay, I guess. So yeah, both of these episodes, um, they were they were pretty good, but I wouldn't say they're all that great. I mean, I I, I can kind of see knock knock who's there being slightly better, is because that, like I said earlier, there were some funny jokes. But again, um. I will admit that I did laugh at some of the jokes in Knock Knock Who's Dare, but I, I will probably pick this episode over Pat Hart Squid. Even though I gave even though I give Knock Knock Who's Dare an okay, I still think it's slightly better than Pat Hart Squid. Alright, so that's my review on the episodes. Uh, I do have the Google Drive links provided by one of my subscribers because um, since the Season 12 DVD has already been released, um, these episodes have probably already came out in different countries and high quality, so that's the reason why these episodes are the way they are. So, yeah, sorry if I'm going off topic and rambling here, but that's all I really wanted to say about these episodes. Alright, so that's it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time with another review. Hello everyone, this is EB the Sponge Reviewer, and today I would like to give a huge thank you to one of my Twitter followers and Discord friends. Uh, Luke V 
for giving me this opportunity to watch another episode of Spongebob that has recently came out in a different country that has not yet aired in the United States. And today I'll be here to talk about Lighthouse Louie. So yeah, this is another episode from season 12 that recently came out in another country that I have not gotten a chance to see. It's because that I haven't been really all that focused on keeping up with newer episodes as of lately. I think I have to say that mainly because of myself not talking about Spongebob all that much on EB the Original Master, but I would like to start to get more information about these episodes. So anyways, uh, Lighthouse Louie is an episode from season 12 where Spongebob has to clean the lighthouse of Mrs. Puffs' boating school after a terrible day of boating school. So yeah, at the beginning of the episode is your typical boating school episode, Spongebob is recklessly driving that's nothing new and um i have to say this episode was actually really good now um if i want to be totally honest with this episode you guys um i do love the concept of spongebob cleaning out the lighthouse of the boating school but it ends up being another episode where spongebob befriends something else and that's uh the snail character he finds that he names louie so there's a snail living in the lighthouse that Spongebob be friends with. Um, the snail then starts attacking him. And then that's where um, chaos occurs. And so that's pretty much the episode. Spongebob cleaning out the lighthouse. He finds the snail, names him Louie. Or, uh, no, Louie's actually a girl. Because at the end of the episode, I'm going to go ahead and spoil it. Because why not? Louie gave birth to other snails. So Louie is actually a girl and not a guy. So... So yeah, so overall, Lighthouse Louie was a pretty interesting episode. Um, even though it's another episode where SpongeBob befriends another character, at this point, I just don't care about that. It's because that I know I have been bashing on episodes, calling them unoriginal and whatnot. But at this point, I should honestly just don't care about that. It was a good episode. It was lots of fun, and I'm gonna have to give Lighthouse Louie a. I'll give it a high good. It was a pretty fun episode. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, so, again, I'll still see you guys on Saturday with, um, Jolly Lodgers, which is coming out in the United States, so I'll be taking a look at that on Saturday, and also Shell Games is also airing on Saturday, but I've already seen that, because that aired in the UK last Saturday, and, yeah, so, I'll see you guys next Saturday, well, not next Saturday, this upcoming Saturday, I'm sorry, this upcoming Saturday, I'll, I will be reviewing Jolly Lodgers, and yeah, so stay tuned for that. With that said and done, thank you guys for watching and have a great day. Hello everyone, this is EB the Sponge Reviewer here, and I would like to wish everyone a Happy New Year. We are finally in 2021, and you know what that means? I have decided that I am going to go ahead and start bringing out my 2021 review schedule. So today I'm going to review a uh, Hiccup Plague. And uh, before I get any further with this episode, is that this episode is actually going to be airing in the United States on January 18th, but I have gotten an early access to the episode because this episode aired already in a different country, and I had my hands on the English version, so that's how I am able to review this episode a bit earlier than usual. And Nickelodeon, as of right now, is treating season 12 like garbage, so that's why I'm reviewing this episode right now. So, um, Hiccup Plague is actually a really interesting episode is because that it's a really funny episode. I really enjoyed this one. It's interesting. It's about, um, Bikini Bottom thinking that they have these contagious hiccups. And, um, it turned out that these hiccups were actually created by these two retarded kids in a treehouse. Um, they basically, um, made these bubbles that will travel around Bikini Bottom, and if somebody consumes these bubbles, they'll have the hiccups. And that's actually a really funny, unique, clever way of the characters getting the hiccups, and I think it's very funny as well. Um, I won't go way into details in this episode, is because I don't, I don't want to spoil way too much of it, but all I can say is that this episode was pretty fun. Um, I did laugh at a couple of jokes in the episode. I wouldn't say it's all that funny, but... It was, there were some jokes that actually got me to laugh a bit. 
Um, so, yeah, that's all I have to say with Hiccup Plague is because, that, like I said earlier, I'm not going to go way into details with this episode. All, I'm, all I said was the basic premise of the episode. So this review turns out to be um, a little bit shorter than usual, and that's because I'm avoiding spoilers. So I really don't have the Google Drive link at the moment, but I probably won't provide it. It's because that I want you guys to watch the episode for yourself when it airs in the United States if you're from that country. So yeah, so there will be no link to this episode. I'm sorry, but I just want you guys to witness the episode for yourself if you guys will want to. So I didn't spoil the episode. I only, get, I only gave out the basic premise of it. I didn't go way into details with the, with the whole episode. So you guys will be spoiler free. All right, so that's my review for Hiccup Plague. It's a pretty good episode. I enjoyed it. And yeah, so thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time with more reviews for the upcoming months of 2021. So yeah, goodbye. Hello everyone, this is EB the Sponge Clipper here, and I'm finally back home from my vacation in, uh, for Thanksgiving, and I'm here to review um, the new episode of Spongebob that I was kindly given the link to, uh, The Hankering. So yeah, this episode came out today in the United States at 11, so while I was out in the road, I wasn't able to see it, but thanks to one of my subscribers, Luke V, I was able to watch this episode via a link. So, um, in The Hankering, uh, this episode was... Um, I wouldn't say it's the best of the season, but in the, basically in this episode, Mr. Krabs has a taste for chum, and, uh, so Spongebob ends up having to feed him all this chum. So, um, yeah, at first I really didn't understand what the episode was about, but from watching it, I completely understood what the plot was. Is that Mr. Krabs, um, he was very hungry, um, his Navy friends ate up all the food, and so... He was, he had no choice to eat chum. So Spongebob feeds Mr. Krabs all these different types of chums until Mr. Krabs had to go to the chum bucket. And yes, yeah, so that's basically the place where you get all the chum at. So Mr. Krabs ends up eating all the chum and then he dares not to eat chum again. And that's the episode. Um, the episode, the plot is very unoriginal. It's because we've seen episodes of characters eating chum before. So originality, this episode wasn't all that original, but... It was okay for what it was. I wouldn't say it's the best of the season because that, again, we've already seen characters eating chum before, so it's nothing special. So, yeah, overall, I'm gonna give the hankering... I'll give it a low good. I'll just give it an 8.0 out of 10. I'll just give it a low good. Um, yeah, so it was, it was, pretty, it was pretty okay, but again, I'll just give it a low good because it's about, it's, it's, it's about another character eating chum, but again, the plot isn't original, but still. Well, hope you guys enjoyed my review on the hankering. Um, I think this is probably be probably going to be the last episode for the 2019 year and the 2010s decade. So yeah, if this is the, if this and Plankton's Little Chum are the last episodes of the 2010s decade, then oh well, guess we got till next year then. Well, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time with more reviews. Hello everyone, this is Eb the Sponge Reviewer here, and today I'm here to review a SpongeBob episode that recently hasn't came out yet and i don't know if it will come out anytime soon in the united states and that episode is quarantined crab so this is the episode that surprisingly got kicked out of the season 12 spongebob dvd for some strange reason and um i don't know why they didn't include this episode um this episode was produced before the whole covid19 pandemic and all that stuff and um, it doesn't make any sense is because that um, even though this episode is about quarantine, um, it, it just doesn't always imply with the, the, the whole coronavirus situation that's going on right now. Uh, you could be quarantined on any type of disease, like it could be like a, a flu or, or sickness or something like that. It does not have to be a worldwide pandemic like what's going on right now in the world. So I don't know why Nickelodeon is holding off this episode. Is is Nickelodeon is just a dumb is being dumb at this point. So, anyways, uh, in this episode, um, the Krusty Krab is set under quarantine when the health inspector um thought that everyone in the restaurant had this type of clam flu or something. So this whole episode is just about the characters um basically trying to avoid each other from catching this disease, even though that they never had a disease to begin with. So, um, this episode was 
it was pretty funny, I guess. Um, there were some lots of strange shenanigans going on, such as um, Mr. Krabs, Pearl, Mrs. Puff, SpongeBob, Patrick, and Squidward all in the Krusty Krab fighting each other, trying to not catch this strange illness that they got. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say with the episode is that um, there's lots of violence going on. Um, there were some funny shenanigans going around. I wouldn't say that the jokes were all that great, but it was pretty hectic. So I'm going to give Quarantine Crab a low good. I wouldn't say it's anything too special, but um, it got me laughing a bit. There were some great jokes. Well, I wouldn't... Ne never mind. Forget, forget about what I said. I, I didn't mean to say great jokes. I mean, there were some funny jokes, such as, such as like I mentioned earlier... Um, the characters fighting each other and stuff. I thought that was pretty funny. And then the ending was quite visually appealing. I won't spoil the ending because I somebody already spoiled the ending on Twitter, so I don't have to talk about that ending because I'm pretty am sure you guys have already seen the ending of Quarantine Crap. So yeah, the episode just go, just just gets a low good for me. All right, so that's my review on Quarantine Crab. Um, next week I'm gonna review a uh, Knock Knock Who's There and Pat. Heart Squid is because that episode is currently out in high quality and it's in English, so I'm going to be able to watch that episode next week, so I'm going to have a review out for you guys for that episode. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time with that review. Hello everyone, this is Evie the Sponge Reviewer here, back with a new Spongebot review. So today I'm here to review Plankton's Intern and Patrick's Tantrum, and I just got done watching these episodes from a Google Drive link. Um, provided by one of my subscribers. So, um, in, in Plankton's intern, uh, Plankton, um, basically hires somebody to help him steal the Krabby Patty secret formula while, uh, Karen is out doing something. And, um, so yeah, this episode was actually really interesting and I actually really enjoyed it a lot. Um, Pearl, um, was in this episode and she was actually Plankton's intern well, she was actually Plankton's second intern is because that Patrick came in earlier, and of course he screwed everything up. And so that's why uh, uh, Pearl came in to become an intern for Plankton as a part of her summer job so she can get paid, um, you know, so she can, I guess, live a, a much healthier lifestyle. So yeah, there were lots of really interesting things happening in this episode, such as Plankton and Pearl... I'm trying to steal the Crab Patty Secret Formula during the ending of the episode or the climax, and it was really funny. I really did enjoy some of the interactions with um, Plankton and Pearl. In fact, one of my favorite jokes in this episode was the little laser pointer. There was like this little laser pointer in the episode that every time it fired, it made this pew sound, and it was pretty funny. So yeah, Plankton's Intern was a really good episode. I enjoyed it, and he got a good laugh out of me. All right, so now moving on to Patrick's Tantrum. Now, this is another episode that I really enjoyed. This episode was just... I mean, it wasn't... I know it sounds bad at first, but I, at the same time, I really found this episode to be really funny because it was just Patrick having this meltdown every time he heard the sounds of a bell ringing. And so, basically, SpongeBob goes all throughout Bikini Bottom trying to, trying to destroy these bells so Patrick doesn't throw his little tantrum again. And, yeah, I know that it sounds doesn't sound all that interesting, but, to, but you have to watch it to, to see how funny it is, because myself, I really enjoyed this episode a lot. It was really funny, just seeing Patrick just going through this whole meltdown. And then I really do love what they did with this meltdown that Patrick threw in. Well, hold on, let me rephrase this again. I really did appreciate what they did with Patrick's tantrum was um, to throw in a, a climax or, or, or a plot to where Mr. Krabs signs Patrick up to this wrestling match where he has to defeat this guy named Health Hazard Harry, I believe that's his name, but I probably must have screwed that up, but it's somewhere around that name. And yeah, so yeah, Patrick's Tantrum was, was a really good episode too. I really enjoyed Patrick's Tantrum. Um, that's all I'm going to say with the episode because there is something that I don't want to spoil that you guys have to see for yourself. And yeah, so yeah, I, I kind of did spoil the, the wrestling scene, but there's something else in the episode that I really don't want to spoil because I think you'll enjoy it once you get a viewing of it. So yeah, both episodes were pretty good. I enjoyed both Plankton's Intern and Patrick's Tantrum. Both episodes were really funny and I really enjoyed them both.
All right, so after this, I only have two more season 12 episodes to left to review, and then I'll be done with the season. And that's going to be Cookie Cooks and Bubble Bass's Tab. So those episodes will be reviewed sometime later in the week or sometime towards the end of the month. But I'll let you guys know when I will tackle those episodes. All right, so that's my review. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys with those last two season 12 reviews. And then, yeah, I'll be done reviewing season 12 of, this, of SpongeBob. All right, goodbye. Hello everyone, this is E.B. the Sponge Reviewer here, and today I'm here to review the last two Season 12 episodes that I have yet to review here on this channel, and that is Bubble Bass's Tab and Kooky Cooks. So, these episodes were pretty good. Um, I enjoyed both of these episodes, they had um, really unique concepts, and I enjoyed them both. So, um, in Bubble Bass's Tab, uh, Bubble Bass has to pay um, this extremely long tab after ordering a lot of food at the Krusty Krab. And since he's not going to pay it, um, Mr. Krabs orders SpongeBob and Squidward to go to his house to make him pay for his tab. And um, lots of really interesting um, shenanigans occurred in this episode. And one of them involved in Bubble Bass and Squidward and SpongeBob having a gladiator match in, the, in, in a board game format in the name of Three Deadly Challenges. So I won't go into any more details with the episode is because that I want you guys, for you guys to see the episode for yourself. If you already have the season 12 DVD or if you have yet to see the episode yourself. So that's all I have to say for Bubble Blast's tab. It was pretty interesting and had some really good jokes in the episode. So now moving on to Cookie Cooks. In this episode, uh, Mr. Krabs and Mrs. Puff are once again having a date at a fancy restaurant. Mrs. Puff thinks that Mr. Krabs is way too cheap. So he, I mean, so, she, oh, I'm sorry. So she kind of like breaks up with him in a way, but they, they really didn't broke up or anything. So, so what happens is that Mr. Krabs decides to invite Mrs. Puff over for dinner while Mr. While SpongeBob and uh, Squidward becomes the the chefs and Pearl being the waiter, basically taking the food and bringing the food to the table. So the ending of this, the, the climax of this episode was really funny. I won't spoil the climax just because that it's it's worth all of your time. This episode had lots of ex exaggerated facial expressions, which made the episode even more funnier. And yeah, so this episode was absolutely really funny. I really did enjoy the climax. It got me laughing. And um, yeah, so overall, Cookie Cooks was a pretty darn good episode. And that's it, everyone. I am finished reviewing season 12 of SpongeBob, and I can finally put this up to an end. So um, for the future for SpongeBob reviews, um, Sponge Out of Water will most likely be the final SpongeBob review in a while is because that, as you guys can tell already, that season 13 is probably still currently in production stages and is going to be on the back burner is because that, of course, if you guys didn't know already, the SpongeBob team are actually working on the Camp Coral spinoff. So that's actually hindering the production of season 13. So we don't have any information of when the rest of season 13 is going to air. I'm, I, I hope more of season 13 airs this year in 2021. I hope so is because that we need more episodes to review. So in the meantime, uh, Sponge Out of Water will most likely be the final review for a while until we get more season 13 episodes coming along for SpongeBob. And I might do more discussion videos on this channel. It, it, I might, it doesn't mean I'm gonna do them. It's because that I don't know what the future for this channel is gonna hold until we get more SpongeBob episodes to come out in the United States. So with that said and done, my next review on this channel will be on Sponge Out of Water, which will be probably next month or somewhere around those times. And yeah, so thank you guys for watching my review on uh, Cookie Cooks and Bubble Bass's Tab. And I'll see you guys next time with my review on Sponge Out of Water. So goodbye. Hello everyone, this is EB the Sponge Reviewer. And I have decided that I'm gonna go ahead and quickly do this video format on my review on Escape from Beneath Glove World, the new SpongeBob episode that just came out today at 11 a.m. So this is the first SpongeBob episode to come out in the year 2020. And as for the first episode of 2020, 
Um, I found this episode to just be okay. Now, before I get any further, I was kind of multitasking while working. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. I was kind of multitasking while watching this episode because I was doing other things, but it didn't keep me from getting into the information of the episode. Now, I'm going to go ahead and explain to you guys why I thought the episode was okay. Well, for starters, um, I'm not a big fan of the title card. Is 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 literally something that we've seen before. We've seen this in The Getaway. We've seen this in Squids on the Bus. It kind of felt like that they went lazy for the title card. So the title card is just all right, in my opinion. Now let's talk about the episode itself. Um, some of the things that I actually liked about this episode was the premise was was pretty interesting. But again, I'm sorry, you guys, but I just don't like um, ideas that sounds familiar to other ideas all that much because this is an episode where um, SpongeBob and Patrick, they're basically in Glove World and they get thrown into jail of Glove World because they were caught um, in the back part of it where the animatronics were at. So yeah, there's the, there's this animatronic fish character in the episode. Please don't correct me who his name is. I could care less. I am not doing this for professional wise. I can care less who the character name is. It's because that I just don't care. So if you do correct me, thank you. But I honestly won't care all that much. I'm not doing these reviews for profession. These are just my opinions on the episode. Um, the, the little song that was sung in the episode was okay. I thought it was pretty interesting. But other than that, the rest of the episode, in my opinion, was just not all that amusing. You got um, these kids locked up in the jail of the glove world. Um, you got this one particular kid who's that SpongeBob and Patrick were trying to stop from getting into trouble. Kind of felt like an ep- we kind of seemed like we've seen this before, but... Yeah, sorry if this review is all over the place. It's just because that I was multitasking while watching this and I don't plan on seeing it again anytime soon because I just probably won't care all that much. But yeah, overall, Escape from Beneath Glove World, in my opinion, is just okay. Um, this, is, this, is the, this is the first episode of 2020, so hopefully it'll get better in the, in the, in the future, of course. So yeah, as the first episode of 2020, it was just okay, in my opinion. If you enjoyed this episode, that's great your opinion i'm not gonna bash on your opinion we all have different tastes of things but yeah oh yeah another thing i like about the title card there's one thing i almost forgot to mention is that i do love the font the font so the font's pretty good but the but the background itself yeah it's literally the getaway and squids on the bus it's the same freaking title card but with that said and done that's my little review on escape from beneath glove world sorry it wasn't all that much but again that's all i'm here to provide Uh, Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time with another SpongeBob review if a new episode comes out in the United States, or another country for that matter. Hello everyone, this is Evie the Sponge Reviewer here, and today I am here to provide you guys a review on the new episode of SpongeBob that just aired today at 11, uh, Krusty Concessionaries and Dream Hoppers. So um, this is actually uh, the season 12 finale, according to production-wise. And I'm here to tell you guys my thoughts on the episodes. So, um, in Krusty Concessionaries, it's an episode where SpongeBob and Squidward must cater a rock concert in the name of Low Tides. So, this episode is pretty similar to Krusty Catering from uh, Season 10. And um, it's, it has a very similar premise where, basically, we have the characters catering an event... And that's what Krusty Concessionaries is all about. Um, in my opinion about this episode, I wouldn't say it's the greatest. Is because that I really didn't find the episode to be all that interesting. And it's not for a bad reason. I'm just saying that nothing really stood out to me with this episode all that much. Um, there were some good things about it, such as, I guess, the way how SpongeBob um, served the Krabby Patties to the customers or the, the contestants of the rock concert. Um, there was a new character in this episode in the name of um, Claire St. Clair, I think that's how you pronounce his name, who is this um, clarinet player who plays like this white clarinet that Squidward has a... His, he looks up to him as his idol. He, that's one of his new favorite clarinet musicians next to Kelpie G, 
who also appeared in Sponge on the Run. Yes, if you guys didn't know already, Kelpie G is on Sponge on the Run. If you haven't yet seen the movie, um, I have the link of the movie in the description of my spoiler review of Sponge on the Run. So be sure to check out that video to find the link to it. But yeah, overall, Krusty Concessionaries was, it, it was okay. I wouldn't say it's a good episode because that, I, I like I said earlier, it really wasn't all that, didn't, Everything about the episode really didn't interest me all that much, but episode. Now moving on to Dream Hoppers, which is actually takes place after the events of Krusty Concessionaries, because little, little spoiler in the beginning of Dream Hoppers, SpongeBob comes home all exhausted from the events of Krusty Concessionaries. So that's actually really cool to see that this episode takes place after the last episode, which is a pretty cool concept. And um. In this episode, so basically Spongebob just goes to sleep, and then he basically dreams. He has, he basically dreams about him making these Krabby Patties, and the Krabby Patty then creates all this havoc and stuff. So that's all I'm going to say with the episode. I'm not going to tell you what happens in the episode, because that'll, that'll be going way too far. All I'm going to say about this episode is that it takes place after Krusty Concessionaries. Spongebob falls asleep in bed. He dreams about making these Krabby Patties, and then one of the Krabby Patties that he made turns evil, and that's all I'm going to say. Another thing that I want to bring up, one more thing that I want to bring up that, that, that isn't all that much spoilers, is that this is the second episode um, to have no dialogue in it. Well, there was dialogue in the beginning of the episode, but majority of this episode has no dialogue in it, but the, the first half of the episode does have dialogue, just to let you guys know on that. So this is basically Reef Blower, but much better. It's basically a combination of Reef Blower and Sleepy Time from Season 1, because it's Season 12, it's a more modern episode, and it have elements from Sleepy Time and Reef Blower. So that's all I'm going to say with Dream Hoppers. The episode was actually pretty decent. I actually liked Dream Hoppers. But, um, but with Krusty Concessionaries, I give that episode an okay. Sorry for the weird review. I did all the best I can, and I'm not going to restart this recording just to provide a better review because that I really don't care, and I don't have the time for that. So that's my review on Krusty Concessionaries and Dream Hoppers, and I'll see you guys next time with another review when Nickelodeon announced a new episode to come out for SpongeBob. All right, goodbye.